talk about a strong program, probably, not probably, second to none uh, in terms of its comparison to any other high school district in the state of Florida is Polk County. The guy that runs that entire program, his name is Dan Talbot. He's the athletic director and he's with us today. Dan, so great to have you as always. I just read something uh, actually when I was coming over. Of course, I wasn't looking at my phone when I was driving because I'm a, I'm a straight arrow, <laughs> just like Jack. But uh, district title won by three, I believe it was three, let's see, Lake Wales. You'll have to fill me in. Like last night, I think it was, or this week. So soccer, soccer. Soccer. We had Fort Meade. We had uh, Auburndale girls won. They upset yep. the number one seed. So it's it's busy. There's a lot to keep up with. We got regional weightlifting going on right now for the girls, which is the you know the meet before our next one that we're going to host here in a couple weeks, which is the state championships for girls weightlifting. So lots going on. Seems like there's just more and more state championships coming this direction. Magical. It's great. So I'm, I, you know, people Thanks don't. For that one word answer. <laughs> well, it's great. I'd, I'd rather have them here. I think we do a great job in Polk County with our partnerships. You know, with our city entities like City of Auburndale, City of Lakeland, and all the different things that we do to provide a, a state championship event for our student athletes. So it's we want them here in Polk County. Well, you said the key word, and that's partnerships. And one of those partners is the Hampton Inn at Lakeside, and so we certainly have to thank them for, uh, you know, because they're right there every time we have a state championship. Say, hey, when are they coming? They take good care of our they athletes, do. so we appreciate everything that they do. Hampton Inn Lakeside, one of our key sponsors of Sports Central. Well, Dan, you know, a lot of these state championships come up, girls weightlifting. Uh, there's a girl from Auburndale, I know, that is really primed, ready to go. Um, ran into her at a city commission meeting in, in Auburndale weeks run together for me now maybe a week and a half ago with Cody McGee our next uh, one of our next guests but when, I don't know what it is about Polk County and weightlifting wrestling as well just had some perennial championship teams and, and, and athletes I mean how does that happen you know I think you take you take a student athlete and and basically if you think about the winter sports you, you have basketball and soccer and your volleyball girls, your softball girls, your track and field athletes are kind of in that low where not a lot's going on, especially for the ones that aren't playing club volleyball. Mm -hmm. So girls weightlifting was just nestled right into the middle of winter sports and it's a, it's a perfect lead into softball, track and field, and now even more importantly, it's a great lead into the new sports we're starting this spring, which is girls flag football and beach volleyball. So it's a perfect lead in. That's why our, our participation numbers for girls weightlifting is just unbelievable and it, it is fantastic because like I said extracurricular activities is the number one drop out prevention in high school we'd rather have them with us and our coaches and our athletic you know departments and you know out wandering talk to us a little bit about the explosion in girls flag football oh it has been unbelievable you know we have some major partners um, that have really assisted us along the way to, to pull this off obviously the school district working with our teacher union to get the supplements. Nike has given us the uniforms for all our teams in Polk County to participate in part of that Super Bowl promotion when the Super Bowl was here in Tampa Bay mm -hmm. a few years ago. Um, they've honored that commitment to provide uniforms and so we have the uniforms for the girls. But just hearing the numbers that schools are dealing with, we were we just started varsity. We just wanted to add varsity, see how it goes, kind of slow play it and see how it goes and so we have about 25 roster spots I know Mulberry had 82 girls come to the interest meeting so we are already spoke to the you know the, wow. the union about adding JV girls flag football next year uh, and it just has exploded on the scene and, and really where it comes from is our next door neighbor in Hillsborough County yeah. because they have Alonzo and Robinson which are the two premier programs in the country and we're right next door so we're excited I've been in communication with Hillsborough County and actually we have a, we have four of our teams going to the Tampa Bay Bucks preseason event in February at the Bucks um, Monday the 20th is the media day at Raymond James Stadium 
So we have four schools who are going to participate in that, and then they're going to play games at the Tampa Bay Bucks practice facility uh, throughout that week of the big preseason kickoff event for girls flag football. So we're excited, and I think it's it's long overdue. But I know, but when you have 82 girls come to an interest meeting, then then we did our jobs, and we're we're meeting the demands of our student athletes. Yeah. Well, if you take that one step further, you know, if you keep them on, it's better to be proactive than it is reactive. You know, either you can get them involved, get them to participate rather than incarcerate. Mm -hmm. And that is the beauty of sports, is that it teaches them discipline, it t you know, time, it teaches how to get along with other people, yet be, still be a good competitor and good sportsmanship. There's nothing like sports that develops our youth, but to be able to create and have those offerings, albeit the, the old stuff like stick and ball sports or some of these new sports coming up, Man, I just think it's phenomenal, but it's the direction I, I, I'm really pleased, really happy to see Polk County headed, but always at the forefront, and of course with your leadership, it's, Thank you. I, I expect nothing less. But it's great. I, you know, I, I listened to a guy talk last night and talking about interviewing because, you know, not all student athletes will go on to the next level mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and vice versa. But there's so much they can get out of participating in sports. And I listened to one business opportunity say when he interviews people, he wants to know, did they play sports in high school or at some level? Because sports gives you the ability to work well with others get along with your teammates, be a good teammate, and that's what people need in their companies and that's what they're looking for and that's exactly what we're trying to provide is, is prepare those student athletes for life after sports. And if they can continue on with sports, great, but we want to prepare, prepare them for life after. Well, for sports. many, it's, it's they're teaching them life skills. Mm -hmm. For many, they're not getting it home. Correct. You know, and that's, that's what's so important. Anyway, Jack, you're, you're kind of the volleyball King, well, maybe well, the queen too. I was, <laughs> <laughs> but I know that's on the tip of your tongue. Too. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you, but uh, uh, boys volleyball coming, uh, another sport that's had a lot of interest. It's here. It's so. here. It's, it starts uh, February 13th, uh, either February 6th or 13th. We've, we've added so many this year. We've added bowling and beach volleyball, boys volleyball. But we're excited for boys volleyball too. And it wasn't just fair, you know. When you look at adding sports, a lot of school districts will just add the female sports for Title IX, but mm -hmm. it, was, it, it made sense and there was a lot of demand for uh, boys volleyball, especially on the east side. I was going to say, that's another one that's coming. You, that you, so you're talking earlier about our neighbors in Hillsborough County. These are our neighbors on the other side where the Correct. boys volleyball is, is, is as high And demand. you're exactly right. If you think about girls flag football, it's really, it butts up to Hillsborough County, which is very high, but then Osceola and Orange County really has that boys volleyball. And with, with Polk County being so large landmass wise, we're, we're just wanting to meet the demands of our student athletes. Talk about the upcoming uh, playoffs, uh, rather the, the our hosting the games and RP funding and um, Advent Health. So I'm taking vacation next week yep. um, and get some downtime because when I return, um, we it's going to be three weeks of just intense impact, community involvement. We're hosting the Girls State Championship, which is a one-day event, but it really takes two days to set up. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to have a lot of student athletes, some of the strongest women in the state of Florida are going to be here on February 18th. Then we have to break down the arena, flip the arena, put the basketball court down on Wednesday. We start the girls basketball tournament right after and then we'll take a couple days off and then the boys will be coming to town. So we got three straight weeks of people from all around the state of Florida coming to Polk County to celebrate championships and, and see what our community is all about. So we're excited. And wrapping it up with the boys volleyball championships at Polk State toward it, the end of the season. Correct? And boys weightlifting. And so boys weightlifting. April and so. May. So we had that three week little break. You know, we had that three week intense period of the state championships. We'll have a little time off and then the boys state finals, which is going to be exciting to bring our teams to watch that event since it's our first year participating. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just keep trying to add sports, but I love them here in Polk County. It saves me a lot of time. I'd rather drive 20 minutes to Lakeland or Winter Haven than, you know, last year for girls weightlifting, it took me seven hours to get to the panhandle to, to, to watch our student athletes. And that was one of the main things. Let's get that home. Let's get that here. Well, that was one of the things with basketball too. This was back in the early nineties when it went up to, uh, up to the panhandle and everybody was griping about it. You know, it doesn't make any sense. You know, the central location is, is, clearly the best for the state of Florida. I mean, you look, you look at our area and more than a hundred, uh, 
half the state's population live within a hundred mile radius of right here of the RP funding center really you know and it's, it's more economical for the school system all the school systems not just Polk correct and and uh, yeah and it's, it's it's nice to spread things around if you can but the big picture states no the best thing is keep it central and when you have a team that can put it together like your team like the the sports team with tourism and uh, Polk County tourism and sports marketing just doesn't get any better than that and that support and that teamwork is really why Polk County is the, the amateur sports capital of Florida. I agree. I, I don't. I, I think the, you know, I call them always return for the general population, but the people need to understand that it's not just the school system. It's there's so many city entities and and sports marketing. It's a collaborative effort between all parties involved in Polk County to make one event happen. I mean, you can go on to the Flying Tigers and the Detroit Tigers and different, you know, City of Bartow. All these different entities that come together. Uh, to help each other succeed in all areas, just like with Russ Matt. You know, we have all those teams come to Polk County, and we're actually, our fields are being used as well just because there's so many coming, but that's what we do is to help each other out because, like you said, this is the amateur sports capital of the world, and, and I enjoy it, and it's great. It's just it's absolutely phenomenal. You know, Dan, you and your team have done just a marvelous job, and, and you know, you really have to give credit where credit is due, too. You take a look at the Board of County Commissioners, Mm -hmm. um, extremely supportive of that. They understand it. They get the economic impact. They get all the other things that go along with it. Um, our county manager, Bill Beasley, and Ryan Taylor, go. Keep, you know, and they just keep, you know, saying, keep going after it and keep going. I mean, the school board. I mean, wow, what a what a supportive well, group they have been. You know, and I'm fortunate enough to be in a situation where I do get a lot of the credit, but I also understand that it, it's a it's way more than me. It's you think about, like you said, the, the superintendent, the school board, the board of county commissioners, it's everyone above me that's basically allowing and supporting these things to happen. It doesn't just take one person. It, you know, you talk about it takes an entire village to raise a, a child. Well, it takes an entire community to be able to do what we do here together. And that's why I always give credit where credit's due. And it's, it's everyone in Polk County. It's not just the school board. We have the support from our city entities, from our county commissioners, from our school board members, and you know, I tell this to everyone, I, I have the greatest job in the world. Yeah. Well, and, and to have that going into the, into the next few weeks, you're gonna need that, so that's great. Dan, yes, always great to have you, and I certainly appreciate everything that you do for this community, and um, I, I, it goes without saying, you, uh, your efforts should be applauded, and then some. Thank you, appreciate you bet. it. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this interview and want to watch more Sports Central, click the video below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.